Gundam.tk presents Double Zeta Gundam. Hey, it's Robert184, as always, from Gundam.tk, and I'm back continuing my look at the high grade Universal Century Double Zeta Gundam. Don't forget to check out the deboxing, but now it's time to take a look at the parts because it's all put together. Just a few quick notes before I begin. First of all, when I talked about the A-plate, I made a mistake. I said there were only three colors, but it's really hard to tell here. But these, they have four thrusters down there that are actually a different kind of gray from the gray that's on there. But Bandai, you really didn't have to break out your four color machines just for that. But hey, it's nice to show, it's nice that you can see that they care. People that have been watching my videos for a while know that I never paint because I'm lazy, but I do use lining markers on every model I build. So these are the best two bucks you'll ever spend unless you're good at inking. But again, also too, if you want to get rid of the discolorations when you cut off the parts, and the double zeta is really colorful, it's got lots of red, blue, and yellow trim all over the place. If you just have a regular set of Gundam markers, when I cut off the gate to the white discoloration, I just go over it with a little bit of marker and wipe off the excess, and most of it, 80% of it, will disappear, and you only have to put in about 10% effort, which is a good trade-off for me. And finally, because the High Grade Universal Century Double Zeta is a transforming Gundam, you're going to have leftover parts, and they do give you a stand for some of them, but not for all of them. So anyway, make yourself a Ziploc or some storage mechanism to keep those pieces early, otherwise they may go missing when you do want to actually transform it. Onto the model itself, I have to say first of all that I was really impressed when I was building this, and of course I say this all the time with newer kits, but they just get better and better all the time, and the ingenious way that they put things together just, uh, it's really cool when you're putting it together. But once you do, what are you going to get? Well, you're going to get two legs, and they have these side skirts already built into them, so that means you're going to have a really small waist armor, the chest section, two arms with the shoulders built into them. You're going to get the double beam rifle, you're going to get huge beam sabers, and a very colorful core fighter, the large backpack, and you're going to get a stand here which is used to attach the G Fortress onto the action base and you can also put in the thrusters and extra hands there which is a nice touch and then you're going to get three blocky parts which are used in the transformation and to hold the backpack on. So overall a lot of parts and a lot of colors when you put it all together. Starting at the bottom and working our way to the top, of course you'll notice a lot of colors and only one of them is a seal, which means Bandai took, uh, they went to all sorts of efforts to make these small colorful parts in the colors they should be properly molded. Anyway, with the foot you've got a poly cap inside and then a bend and ball mechanism on the ankle, so you've got a fair bit of mobility and it actually feels pretty solid, so I'm impressed with the feet. This part here will move as does this part on the knee and these parts do not move. As far as the knee, it will bend down like this, so you're going to get over 90 degrees, which is good to see for a high grade, especially of a UC kit like this. And the side skirts rotate around here. Also along the lines of the not skimping out is that Bandai gave black seals that go inside all of these parts that go on the chest and legs. So that's good because if you line that it would really show. And so here I have a grey part that I've lined, and yeah, I'm actually much happier that they gave us seals. Very simple skirt armor that you can just put in a little bit of black lining there. I went over that with a q-tip to smooth it out. And on the back, of course, some of these things are going to pop off when we do the transformation. The chest was the first thing that I built, and I have to say that there's just something that's cool about it. And I can't really put it into words, but there are little details like the fact that this blue part here is longer than it has to be. So where you have the ugly gate marks where you cut it off because this, of course, needs a lot of uh, plastic injected into it, they're all hidden under this armor, which I thought was just a great touch. So you pop this in, that's where you'll attach it onto the waist armor. And the shoulder, you're able to move it like this. So we're going to have pretty decent mobility. And the head also moves. And of course, though, this is going to be a bit of a parts former, which means for the transformation, you actually take these parts off, which is not too easy and not too difficult, which is good, means they'll stay in place. And then you'll pop this off in the front and then reattach everything. So it's not really like the Master Grade, but then again, it feels completely solid. And there you can see the gouge marks where I cut it off. I'm impressed with the arms as well. First of all, the shoulders are built in and you've just got a poly cap inside there. This part, of course, is going to bend and spin around for the transformation. And for mobility, you're going to be able to move the arm just a little bit over 90 degrees and it rotates there at the shoulder, no problem. 
Down on the forum, of course, the Double Zeta has these very unique shield, fin, tail stabilizers, whatever you want to call them, and they move pretty well, no problems there. This one feels a little bit looser than this one, but overall pretty stable. I found the hands that they included pretty interesting. They're only going to give you three. The left hand is always going to be closed. The right hand is going to be open, but they also give you a trigger hand, which you'll notice is sitting here in this base along with the thrusters. But again, where this kit wins out on the legs, there's tons of colors in the yellow blue and of course besides this being a seal but again these little red details here on the elbow just make this kit worth every extra penny that we had to pay for it the double beam rifle is huge and really captures the feel of the anime and everything is pretty solid of course these will pivot around for the transformation there we just have a green sticker and this is going to bend down and this is going to bend in as well when we transform it my only complaint is that this is a solid black piece which is good but at the end there's a sticker and it doesn't quite fit on there as well as it could have, so I probably would have been better off not putting it on at all. The massive backpack of, of course, one of the Double Zeta's trademarks, and for moving parts, we've just got these parts down here at the bottom. These thrusters, of course, look a lot better on the package than the gray blocks that they are when you cut them off. But otherwise, these parts don't move, but when you open them up, they reveal the missile pods inside, and you can ink those if you were really good at that, and they would look a little bit better. But these parts do move, and of course, these will come off, and if you pull them off properly, these are going to turn into the beam sabers. I chose not to line these, but we do get very long, thin beam sabers, which hopefully are not going to have any of the weight issues that the massive master grade beam sabers do have. They do really give you the impression, though, that these are hyper beam sabers compared to a regular HGUC kit. I'm also loving the core fighter that they give you, and of course this does not go inside, so it's ne always going to be uh, available for separate display, which is great. And it doesn't really have a lot of moving parts, the tail will just pop off, pop off as you see there. But you can pull these off, and actually if you didn't want to transform it, you can move them in. and then that. But then they fit on here and they stay on very securely, which is great. Put a little bit of black lining in there. My only complaint, again, is similar to the double beam rifle. This black sticker could be a lot better, and it would look a lot better if you painted it up with the proper yellow trim, as seen in the anime. But overall, besides the missing tail, I like this a lot. Now something that we haven't seen too often is A, you're going to get this special custom mount mechanism which is going to allow the massive G Fortress to sit on an action base 1. And please note that that's an action base 1, not 2. But anyway, it's sort of cool that they built in the ability to keep these thrusters in here while it's in, uh, well, mobile suit mode. And you can put the hand in there, as ridiculous as it looks. And they also give you a small part to put in that blue panel, which we're going to put in when we put it into G Fortress mode. And however cool it is that they built these parts into this, why not build something that you can also incorporate these into? So that's why I've got the Ziploc bag. Anyway, this is going to be used in the mobile suit to mount the backpack onto it. When you transform it, this is going to be used on the core top to remount. Basically, remember, this doesn't swing up. You just pop it off, pop this on, and then readjust everything and put it down into the laying down position. And this part is also going to be used on the core base when you're putting it, putting the backpack down above the legs. Finally, the head itself, I think, does a very good job. It's not really oversized, but it is still bigger, of course, than the RX-78 II's head or something like that. I had a lot easier time lining the inside of this than I did on the Master Grade, and overall, very few panel lines, and everything is pretty easy to put in. Just have to be a little bit careful here because the uh, indents are a bit shallow. And my only real complaint is about this sticker on the eyes has a silver part in the middle, and unless you line it up just right, it's not going to sit on there very smooth, and I have it pulled a little bit over too far to the Gundam's left. So that's something I should have done a little bit better. But overall, I think they did a good job of capturing the anime feel. Lots of parts and lots of really good engineering so far going in here, with my only real complaint being, why didn't they give us a way to put all of the extra parts onto this base? That's my only complaint, and if that's all I've got, that's pretty good. Anyway, stay tuned everybody, this is Robert184. Hit like if you liked the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know what you think down below, and we'll see you with the next part and put this thing all together. Thanks for watching.